We're trying to introduce the characteristics of barley beta glucan, which is highly soluble and of high content, into the grains of wheat and rice. The beta glucan and arabinoxylan are complex sugars that are found in the cell walls of grass species such as wheat, rice and barley. We feel that we can have a global impact on human health by making beta glucan content higher in wheat and rice. The desire to get off the farm but still be involved in it in some way it motivated me towards my career in science. As I was growing up, I was highly influenced by my parents, um, both who, who are plant lovers. We had a large garden, had a veggie patch. So to see whether our plants have beta-glucan in them, what we do is we extract the cell walls, we purify them, and then we digest them with an enzyme which specifically chops up beta-glucan into smaller pieces. From there we again purify those small sugars and we spot them onto what's called a mouldy plate. We're able to then put that plate into a mass spectrometer and measure the mass of each of those small sugars. We discovered two types of genes which we identified to be involved in beta-glucan biosynthesis. So we actually don't know how the fine structure of beta-glucan is made. So that's why we need to do the fundamental research to be able to discover which genes might be involved in that particular process. And it's possible that rice and wheat do have those genes but they're not regulated in the same way. Through those discoveries, we hope that we can either conventionally breed those traits into elite cultivars of wheat and rice, but if not, then we'll have to use a transgenic approach. So the mass spectrometer can tell us whether we have beta-glucan in our samples. This chromatography technique allows us to determine the amount of beta-glucan and also the structure of that beta-glucan. In a typical sample, there'll be over a thousand proteins, but very few of those proteins are actually involved in the making of beta-glucan. Once I've identified the proteins that are within a sample, that information is then taken back to the researcher to figure out the importance of those proteins. So here I've got some garden variety bean plants and we use this as a test system to see whether our genes are involved in beta-glucan biosynthesis. We put those genes into a bacterium called agrobacterium and that bacterium naturally infects plants. So it naturally transfers the DNA into the plant and the plant then makes the protein which could be involved in beta-glucan biosynthesis. We can certainly eat more beta-glucan in our diets by consuming more grains such as barley, oats and rye. The world production of those particular grains is quite low in comparison to wheat and rice. There has been some research done in trying to extract beta-glucan and then add that back into, into products. Through the extraction process, it seems like there is some sort of modification made to the beta-glucan that reduces its efficacy and its human health promoting properties. These pictures are transmission electron microscope images which show beta-glucan in the wall. So these black dots represent beta-glucan. So what we can determine is the distribution of beta-glucan in the wall and which cell types make a lot of beta-glucan. The beta-glucan work is in an early stage and we envisage that um, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to using discoveries of plant cell walls in the agri-food sector. Hopefully, some of the work I do will actually help farmers in the future. We don't do science to earn lots of dollars. We do it because we're interested in a scientific discovery and its process. We enjoy the logic to learn about things that people have not known about before.